Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo tech. And today Apple released iOS 13.4 developer beta three. Now this is out to developers and hopefully soon to public beta testers. It usually comes out the same day or lately it's been the next day. So beta two actually came out to public beta testers the following day. So you may be seeing it by the time you're watching this video, or it could be the following day. Now on my iPhone 11 pro max, it came in at 336.3 megabytes, and it was about 300 megabytes on all of these devices here. My iPhone 6s plus iPad pro 12.9 and also the iPhone 10 R. So let's go ahead and take a look at the build number. Now, one thing to note about the build number is when you go into about to see the build number, it actually delays. Now there's a little bug there already. So you'll see it delays and then it goes over to the build number. So again, if I go back to about it delays. Now this particular build number is 17 E five, two, four, one D. And this build does not have a ton new in it, but there are some other things that are fairly significant in the code. I'll talk about some other things they've fixed as well in a moment. But the first thing is there were also Mac OS watch OS and Apple TV updates for beta testers. So if you're beta testing those particular devices, you'll have all of those updates as well as iPad OS as well. Now on the iPhone 11 pro max that I'm using here and some other phones, you may see a modem update. And if you want to know how to find that modem, update, you go to settings and go back to about. And if you scroll down, the modem firmware is here. Now the modem firmware on my phone is 1.05.28. And this particular modem firmware probably is okay. I actually had no issues with beta two on Wi-Fi or LTE. So if I switch from Wi-Fi to LTE and back again, I had no issues whatsoever. So it seems to be okay. They've finally fixed the issues, at least for me on my phones. And I haven't heard any complaints since beta one or beta two. So it seems like Apple's really fixed that problem. However, there's also carrier updates as well for some. So depending on what carrier you have, it's under the same menu there. You may have an update for that as well from Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T or others. Now, Apple did update their notes a little bit, and there is one known issue and it's really not a bug. It's just basically an issue that says, if you want to install iOS 13.4 beta three, using a restore image, first, you need to install the Xcode 11.4 beta two. So if you want to use the image to do it, you'll need to actually install it with Xcode. Otherwise you're good to go. Now they did resolve three issues and two of them are fairly significant. In fact, the first one has to do with settings. So there was a bug where settings could quit unexpectedly after using a specific app setting. So maybe you were going to settings for say, uh, how about down here? We'll go to filmic pro settings the settings app could actually crash when you go into that, they have fixed that problem and it shouldn't do that anymore. They've also fixed an issue where photos might not sync with your Apple watch. So if you're having issues with photos syncing to Apple watch, that should now be resolved. Now, as far as new things in this particular update, well, there's two really small things to note. One is actually going to be huge in the future and was found by someone at nine to five Mac. And that is OS recovery over the air. So what that means is if you're using your iPhone and you want to recover software, you may be able to just download the latest software. If it was in recovery mode, you can do this on a Mac currently where you can do an internet install or an internet recovery. You also may have the ability to connect directly from your iPhone's lightning port to another iPhone and connect that way so that you can restore from another phone. So just like you can kind of do a backup and restore, you may be able to do it now completely without iTunes or finder on the Mac. So it looks like we're moving away from that sort of setup, which makes sense since a lot of people don't use computers as much anymore for backup and recovery with iTunes and instead want to use their devices. So we should see that in the future. So that's something I'm looking forward to. And as soon as you're able to try that out, I'll show you what it looks like. Now, the other things found in the code, thanks to my friend, Steve over at Mac rumors is there's new T TV rating symbols for the UK. So there's only two that were found and you can see them here on the left. These are ratings specific to the UK. We don't have these in the United States. They've added this. So maybe if you're using the TV app, you'll see them and there's really nothing else new in this particular update. So they fixed bugs. I'm sure there's probably bug fixes in here. We haven't seen. So if you're having issues, whether that be with music, I've heard a lot of you say you had music issues or some of you having issues with messaging locking up. Hopefully it fixes that issue for you. 
Thankfully, I haven't had that. I have had a few issues with mail, but mail seems to be okay right now. It's showing four and four mail are showing up. So right now, everything seems to be working properly. So there's not a huge update right now. And I would expect this particular update to come out at the end of March, maybe a little bit before, but if Apple has an event at the end of March, I would expect it then. Now, as far as iPad OS, those same changes carry over to iPad OS, but there's nothing new specific to iPad. Hopefully we'll see some changes to multitasking with things like iOS 14, but right now there's nothing new. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, iOS 13.4 beta two, for the most part was pretty good. From most people I heard from, they said it was great. Now for me, let's take a look at it. We'll go to battery and then we'll go to battery health. My battery health is at 100%. And as I've mentioned before, and I'll continue to mention battery health does not get affected just by doing an update. It's just simply rechecking the status of your battery capacity. And as far as overall usage though, you'll see, I have not used my phone a ton of been checking out other things using my iPad. But if we take a look at yesterday, I had screen on time of three hours and 13 minutes with two hours and eight minutes of screen off time. That's playing music or doing something that's actually using the phone, but with the screen off. And you'll see, I used only about 25% of my battery while doing that. So if I was to continue using my battery until it drained or used 100% usage, it got about 12 hours of screen on time. So for me, it's been really good. Others have reported that it's great. I would say about with beta two, 80% of you said that it was good. Now, as far as performance overall, well, it takes a while to figure out performance and battery life over a few days. And I'll do a follow up about that, but I did play around with the iPhone six S plus a little bit for performance. So things just like swiping, those are going to be fine. And you'll see apps loading, scrolling takes a moment to load, but it's working fine. But as far as overall performance, I did mess around with Minecraft just a little bit. And if there's a specific app you want me to try out regularly for consistent tests, as far as speed, let me know in the comments below, but frame rates seemed consistent. When I first loaded the app, they were a little bit slow, but then picked up quickly. So you'll see frame rates are fine. There's no issues there. And then on the other devices, like the iPhone 10 R all of the changes and delays that I mentioned with the about are all the same on all the devices. I tried going into about on all of them and it also hiccuped on all of them. So I'm not sure why it's doing that, but it is. Now there's one other thing I wanted to talk about before we take a look at the benchmarks and that is storage. I actually took a screenshot of storage on my iPhone 11 pro max prior to installing the update just to see where storage is at. Since some of you ask about this. So prior to it, I had 43.5 gigabytes of used storage and system was using 7.21 gigabytes. If we compare that to what we're getting right now, let's go back out of here. We'll take a look at iPhone storage and currently it's using 42.3 gigabytes of storage and we'll wait for this to load to see what system is using. Now this can improve over time as it completes tasks in the background. And so the system storage right now is at 7.21. So it's, very similar. It's nothing to worry about. It seems to be using the same and you shouldn't be worried about using more storage. And when the final version of this comes out, it shouldn't be a problem as well. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench scores. Now I'm using Geekbench five. If you're not familiar with that, you will see lower numbers than Geekbench four, but with the iPhone 11 pro max, I scored 1,332 for single core 3,175 for multi-core. If we take a look at the history and see what it was last week with beta two, and you'll see for single core, we're a little bit higher and then multi-core. Uh, we're a little bit lower. So it just depends when you run this, what the scores will be, but overall they should be fine. I would not expect them to go down dramatically or really see any specific difference on your device. Now let's take a look at all of these devices and get an idea of what Geekbench is on all of them. From left to right, we have the iPad pro 12.9 from 2018. Then we have the iPhone 6s plus the iPhone 10 R and the iPhone 11 pro max. So if you compare your device with this, as long as it's within a few hundred of these, it should be performing optimally and maybe even faster. So that's it for iOS 13.4 beta three. Of course, I'll do a follow up in a few days and I'll run a poll to see how it's going for you. But in general, it seems like it's going to be okay. 13.4 is fixing a lot of stability issues. And like I said before, I think this will come out at the end of March, along with that Apple event. If we see that with the release of some new devices as well. So expect it then. And then of course in June, 
with WWDC, expect iOS 14 at least to be shown and then released to the public in September if they keep with what they've been doing all along, at least for the past few years. Now, if you found anything else new, let me know in the comments below, and I'll give you a shout out in the follow-up video if you did find something different. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. Thank you.